Hi, my name is Stephen Monson with EasyDebtTools.com, and I'm going to show you how to add variable products and simple products to a WooCommerce catalog. So here's an example of a simple product that we're going to be putting in. Uh, it will show you the price and allow you to add to a cart, has a description, etc. And then I'm going to show you how to add a variable product. These are things that might have different colors or different sizes, for example. Um, I'm going to show you some of the various ways you can actually implement that and some of the common pitfalls that people oftentimes run into as well. So you can uh, hopefully avoid those. Um, so yeah, without much further ado, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, once we're in the back end of our WordPress account, all we need to do is go over here on the left to products and then add new. Okay, let's name this product Metal Triplane. And we're going to set the product image. I already have uploaded a photo of this metal triplane toy. And I'm going to set it as the product image. Now I could just leave it right there. I'll show you what happens. I'm going to publish. And now I'm going to view product. This is as basic as it gets right now. It just has the name. It's not even categorized. Um, it just has a picture. You know, pretty simple. I'm going to hit edit product now. We're going to add a little bit more information. Um, I already have some information I've created earlier. But first, I'm going to set a price. We'll say it's $30. But we're going to have it on sale for $19. If I hit update and I viewed a product again, you'll see that it shows the regular price and then it shows the sale price here next to it. It's looking good. A um, couple more things that we can do though. I'm going to add some text I had prepared earlier. Here it is. This is going to be our long description. And I'm going to make this be a bullet list. Right before each one, I'm going to hit enter just to kind of make sure the bullets come in. And looks good. And in the short description, I'm just going to go ahead and say it's great. I'm going to hit update. I'm going to view the product. And you'll see it says it's great up here, right next to the photo in the short description. And here's our longer description right here below. The next thing I want to show you how to do is to manage stock. Or in other words, basically tell the system how many you have of a specific item. Um, so to do that, we're going to click on inventory. We're going to click on manage stock. In here, I'm just going to say there are 50, 50 available. And I'm going to hit update. And I'm going to click on view product again. Here it says there are 50 in stock. Now, if you don't want that to show up for some reason, we can actually turn that off in our WooCommerce settings. To do that, I'm going to go back to edit product. And now I'm going to go to WooCommerce settings. From there, I'm going to click on the Products tab, and then click on Inventory. From there, I'm just going to scroll down to the very bottom. Here it says, Always show quantity remaining in stock, i.e. 12 in stock. You can also have it only show how many are in stock if it's below a certain number, like 2. If you want to change what that number is, it's right here, low stock threshold. Here's a few other small things you can consider adding to your products. Sometimes you might want to add things like the weight and the dimensions. If I do that, I'm going to say that this weighs, uh, we'll say it weighs 16 ounces, and it's going to be 8 by 10 by 6 inches high. Shipping class, we're not going to worry about that right now, but I'm going to hit update. Now, if I add dimensions, it does give us an additional tab here that gives you a little bit of information about like the weight and dimensions of the product. Um, that can be useful just for customers to see that. But also, if you are using a shipping plugin that actually needs to know the dimensions of a product, this will allow it to work. Like, for example, maybe you have a calculator that actually calculates um, how much it would cost to send something through UPS or USPS. Then having that information is going to be critical for uh, it, the plugin to work properly. 
So anyway, that's pretty much everything you need to know for a simple product. Um, you want to put it in a category. You want to give it a name. You want to give it a description. You want to give it a photo. You may want to give it additional photos. Once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to go and you can move on to your next product. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to add a variable product. Now this is when it gets just a little bit more complicated. I'm going to click on add new and we're going to make a product called cotton t-shirt. I have a little bit of text I've already written. This is going to be a bullet list. I'm going to just quickly make it one. Hitting enter after this just to make the bullets appear. And let's add a product image. So I'm going to hit set product image. I'm going to grab this red t-shirt. There we go. By the way, if you haven't already uploaded photos, you can do it really easily by clicking on upload files, select files, and then go to your desktop or wherever you have your image and just click on it and it will upload the image like so. Then you hit set product image, and you're done. You can also add additional products down here. I'm gonna click this one, this one, and this one. Oops, did you see what happened? I only checked each one. If I hold down control, I can actually grab multiple products at one time. Then hit add to gallery, and then you'll see all your products here. If I hit publish, well, I'm gonna put this in a category. And then I'm going to hit publish. And then I'm gonna go up to view product. You'll see we have a basic uh, setup now with our title, our image, and our multiple images here that they can look through. Now the next thing we really need to do though is set up the variables. And that's where the interesting parts come in. To do this, we're gonna click this little drop down here and choose variable product. I'm gonna click there and now I'm gonna click on attributes. I'm gonna hit add and I'm gonna type in color and then values are going to be red. And then we're gonna use a little pipe symbol. This is right, usually right above your enter key on your keyboard. Red, blue, and green. And then I need to make sure that I check use for variations and then hit save attributes. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna click on variations. And just because I added attributes doesn't mean there are gonna be variations. I have to actually add them. I could add them one at a time, or I can click right here and say add variations from all attributes. This is a good time saver. It'll give me a little warning, but I'll say yes, and that's fine. And now it's made a red, blue, and green variation for this product. If I was to just update this, and hit view product, you're gonna see something interesting. It says this product is currently out of stock or unavailable. The reason why is because I haven't actually set a price for my variations. If I go back down here and click on variations, you'll see that if I open this up and you could just click anywhere in this bar to open them up. You can also click expand to expand all of them, but you'll notice that none of them have a price. There's a way I there's two ways I could do this. I could just go into each one and say, okay, this is $10, or maybe I'll say $20, and this is $20, and this is $20. And when there's three, that's not too hard to do. But sometimes you may have 10 or 15 product variations. In that case, it would be just tedious to put in the price for every single thing. So you can save time by going here to the top where it says add variation. And now we have a whole bunch of options here. I could set regular price. I already did that, so I'm gonna just set the sale price right here and hit go. I'm gonna type in 15 and hit okay. And now you should see that all of these, 20, 15, 20, 15, so the sale price has been set for all three variations. Um, you could do the same thing with weight and dimensions, all kinds of you know, various pieces of this. Uh, but if I go ahead and hit update now and view the product, you'll see that now I have my, my cotton t-shirts. There's 20, 15 is the real price, and I can choose what color I want. Now, one thing you'll notice is that this isn't changing you know, the picture over here on the left, but I can change that by going back into edit product. I'm gonna go back to my variations, and I'm going to open up the red one, I'm gonna click this little 
height, this little icon for an image. I'm gonna choose red here. I'm gonna go for blue. I'm gonna choose the blue one. I'm gonna click here. Choose the green one. And now if I hit update, and I view my product, now when I change the product, it's gonna actually reflect that on the as the main image, which is nice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and navigate away and actually then come right back to this product because I wanna show how by default, it just says choose an option. Sometimes this is desirable and sometimes it's not. A lot of times you might want to have a default option. And to do that, we're going to go back into edit product and we're gonna scroll on down here, find our variations tab. And you'll see right here, it says default form values. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna say red. What that means is instead of having a default of, of nothing and making the customer choose, um, now if I click on view product, you'll see that red is the default attribute. This is nice sometimes because it creates less confusion for your customers. So that's how you choose a default. Let me show you a couple more things. If you want to go back to variations, if you want to say have different sale prices or manage stock, you can do that as well. Um, for example, I can say I want to manage stock for each of these individual pieces. I might have say 25 red shirts and maybe I have uh, 15 blue shirts and I will say that I have 18 green shirts. Now if I go back up here and update again to save and then click view product again, you'll see that it shows there are 24 here for red, uh, 15 for blue, and 18 for green. Um, that can be really helpful because a lot of times that's what's going to happen in the real world. You're gonna have different amounts of different shirts and this can help keep track of that for you. It may be kind of obvious, but you can in fact set prices differently depending on what variation people choose. So I might actually put the red shirts on sale for $10 and they may be different than the rest. So I'm gonna click on that update and hit view product. And now you'll see that our variation actually goes from 10 to $15. Um, and the actual price will depend on what I choose. So I see green, it's 15 blue is 15, red is $10. So again, that's just something you can change with the product variations. Okay, there's one more thing I want to teach you about. Under products, there's a menu that says attributes. A lot of times you will have product variations that are going to repeat themselves over and over again. For example, you might have t-shirts that come in different sizes and maybe you sell a hundred different kinds of shirts and they all come in small, medium, large, and extra large. So if that happens, what you'll do is in attributes, you'll say size. And I'm gonna just hit add attribute. And now I'm going to configure the terms. So I've made it kind of this top level attribute of size and then each product or each attribute has its own set of, I guess, sub attributes for lack of a better word right now but I'm gonna say small, and then I'm gonna hit add new. And then I'm gonna say medium, and add new. I'm gonna say large, add new size, and I'll say extra large. And here I have those sizes. I can even, I believe I should be able to actually change their order if I want to as well. So by going back to attributes, then just kind of going back into configure terms, I will actually have the ability to change the order of this, which could be very helpful because sometimes you don't want it to be alphabetical, you want it to be by size. So you're gonna say small and then medium and then large and then extra large. And that's just a helpful thing. And again, you can only really do this in the attributes section. So 
if I do that and I want to go back to my, my t-shirts, I'm gonna go back to all products. I'm going to click on cotton t-shirts. And then I'm going to go to my variations. And I already have colors, but I'm gonna add a new attribute. And I'm gonna uh, choose from a drop down list. The reason why this exists is because I already went into attributes and created it. So now I can just click size, add, and then I can click select all, and it just automatically puts all my sizes in. I check use for variations and save attributes. Now that I've done that, I can go into variations here, and let's just do create variations for all attributes. I'm gonna hit go, say okay, and I'm gonna say okay. It's gonna actually create 12 different uh, variations because we have colors and we also have sizes. So red can come in all the different sizes and so can blue and so can green. Um, that looks pretty good. Let's expand, we'll just kind of take a look, make sure everything looks okay. And here's our regular price and our sale price and you'll notice that this one's not set. So this is a good example of what I was talking about before where now we have a whole bunch of options and we don't wanna go through all of these and just you know, insert regular price one at a time. So I'm gonna go here and I'm going to click set sale prices. Go, say 15, okay. And I'm also gonna do the same thing with the regular price, go 10, 20. Very good, and if I expand all of these, I can go through and make sure it looks okay. Regular price is fine. Um, looks like the sale price did not get put in. Maybe I didn't do it right. So I'm gonna go to set sale prices. And click here, I'm gonna hit go. I'm gonna say 15, okay. There we go. Not sure why it didn't happen the first time, but there it is. It's the sale price is set for all of them now. And we're good to go. I'm gonna update. I hit view product. We'll now see that we can choose a size and a color. Something you might've noticed is that when I click on green and blue and red, it's not actually changing the image over here. And that has to do with the fact that I added more attributes and more variations. Uh, if I go to variations here, you'll see that there's you know red with small, red with medium, red with large, etc. and it goes through the whole thing that way. Um, but you can actually add manual variations, which is kind of helpful sometimes. And I'll show you how that's done. By default, the main dropdown says add variation. So you just click go, and it adds this sort of very generic variation, any color, any size. In this case, what I want to do is I want to say, uh, blue, any size, we want to change the image to be the blue shirt. And I'm gonna hit update. And view to product. Now if I choose red or blue, okay, you'll see that it's actually not working. And I wanted to actually point this out because this trips people up sometimes. If you don't have a price set for an option, it doesn't really work, it doesn't get, become active. And so I need to go back in here to edit product, go to my variations. Here's my new one that says blue, any size. I need to make sure that I set the price for it. I'm gonna say 20 and 15, just like all the others. And then I'm gonna go up here and hit update. And now if I hit view product, you'll see that there it is. It's changed blue to red, that kind of thing. And so I'm just gonna quickly do that for the others. I'm gonna add another variation, say any color red, any size, the variation is gonna still be 20, the sale price will still be 15, and we'll make sure it's red. Uh, you might have seen that it kind of looked like it worked before, that's just because red is the default image. But then let's add one more uh, for green, any size, make it the green t-shirt and put our regular price of, uh, let me say 20 and 15. Update. 
Now, if I view my product, you'll see that we have blue, green, red, and we can choose any size we want. And it's looking pretty good. This leads me to one more uh, way I want to show you how you can add variations, or rather, a different approach you can take to adding variations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete everything except for green, red, and blue. I'm just gonna delete all of these extras. Just gonna hit remove, okay. Remove, okay, and I'll, I'll skip ahead for this in, in the final cut here. Okay, so I've now removed everything except for these three variations, which is actually all I really need. I have green, red, and blue of any size. And you'll see that they have the image, they have their price. Um, because I've said any size, um, I can really kind of cut down the amount of variations that I have and just go to view product and see we have blue, we have red, we have green, we have any size we want, and it's working. We can add it to the cart. Life is good. Um, so if I'm going to go back here, the idea is that you can, instead of doing the add all variations trick, which I showed you earlier, sometimes it's much simpler, especially when you have more than one type of option, like size and color, um, to just kind of do it manually. And again, you just do it by saying add variation, go, and you can use these any size, or you could use the any color feature if you wanted to, um, to make that work. I do want to point out that this more simple structure where we only just have three different types of variations, um, this works really well as long as you know your pricing is simple. You don't like charge different prices for different sizes or colors. Um, then you can use this very simple approach. If, however, you do like, for example, charge more for extra large than you do for small or things like that, you're gonna probably have to use a more robust system. Because if I wanna change the colors and I want to change the size and have specific prices for a color and size, then I really have to have like all 12 of those variations that existed earlier. But this could be a much more simple approach of managing things as long as you don't have a complicated pricing structure so I hope that was helpful. Um, my name is Stephen Monson. I am with easynettools.com. We do web hosting, digital marketing, some social media, and you know, I do web design. And so if you're interested in getting your, your own website and you don't wanna do it all on your own or you need a little help, um, let us know. We can, you can always go into our website, easynettools.com. Uh, we have web design services that range from anywhere from a low for 500 for some very basic things to fully custom designs, databases, the whole works. Those are usually probably gonna be mostly in this range. Um, but yeah. Anyway, if you're interested in getting a new web design company or you're looking for someone to help you with social media or uh, SEO or web design, you know, feel free to look us up on Google. We're Easy Net Tools and you can find us and read our reviews. We have lots of satisfied customers all over the country. And even if you're not interested in looking for a, you know, services, just, hey, give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, if it was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And, you know, if I get a chance, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, yeah, have a great day.